Hi everybody and welcome to the second video on a series that shows you how to build an 8-volt pool game with JavaScript and HTML5. In the first video we structured an HTML document and inside the document we created a canvas element. After that we created a JavaScript object that lets us draw images on the canvas and clear it. Then we tested our code by loading the background image and displaying it on the screen using the object that we created before. As you can see, the background image was drawn on the canvas, but there's only a minor issue. You can see that the image is a little bit cropped down here. So in order to fix that, I will change the dimensions of the canvas to match the dimensions of the background image. So the width should be 1500 and the height should be 825. Now, as I refresh the page, you can see that the image is no longer cropped. So let's go back to our code and delete all those lines we used for testing. Let's save and now create a new JavaScript file that we'll call assets.js. Here, eventually, I'm going to declare functions that will help me deal with loading the assets for the game. But first, I'm going to create a new object, and let's call this object sprites. And it will be equal an empty object. Let's create another variable that we'll call assets still loading. And let's set it to zero. Let's declare a new function, and let's call this function load assets. And this function is going to take as an argument a callback function. So once it finishes to load all the assets, it's going to activate this callback function. Here I want to write something like sprites.background equals um, load sprite. And I want to pass the file name, which is located on the sprites folder. In my case, that will be spr underscore background dot png. In order for that to work, I will need to declare another function here and I will call this function load sprite and this function will take as an argument a file name and the first thing it's gonna do is to increase the number of assets that are still loading. Then I will create uh, an image for this sprite sprite image equals new image object and I'm going to define the source of this image to be the path of the sprites folder which is assets slash sprites slash plus the file name. Now I'm going to use the onload property of the image object and I'm going to define that once the image is done loading, I want to decrease the number of assets that are still loading. Now I will return, I will return the image. We can use the load sprite function that we just wrote to load all the sprites of the game. But for now, I will load just one more. So sprites.stick equals load sprite. And I will send the file name of the stick image. So that will be um, spr stick.png. And we cannot activate the callback function yet because we cannot know for sure that all the images are done loading. Um, in order to validate that, we'll need to create another function and I will call this function assets um, loading loop. And this function will get as an argument the same callback function that we received on the load assets function. Inside this function, um, I'm gonna do something if assets are still loading and else I'm going to do something else. So if the assets are still loading, I want to enter the loop again. 
So I'll use the request animation frame method of the window object in order to send the assets loading loop as a callback function. And I'm going to bind um, this and the argument that I got, which is the callback. Else I want to activate the callback function. So I will just call callback. Finally, we'll need to call the assets loading loop from within the load assets function. So let's just copy that and paste it here. And let's just send the callback function that we got as an argument. And that's it. Well, for now, that's pretty much what we need in assets.js. We're going to use all the code that we wrote here very soon. Let me organize my code a bit before we move on. So I'll just delete some of the spaces here and add more spaces here and here and maybe there. All right, so we are done. Now let's create the most important object on our project. And for that, I'm going to create a new file and call this file game.js. And here I'm going to define a function constructor and call this function constructor game. The game object will contain three methods. Let's write them down. So the first one is game.prototype.init. So here we will initialize the game. The second one will be game.prototype.start. So you can imagine that here we will start the game. And the third one is game.prototype.mainloop. And in this function, pretty much everything is going to happen. Before I write anything inside those methods, I want to create another object. And this object will be called the game world. Let's create another function constructor and call this function constructor game world. The game world will be an object that will contain all the physical objects of the game. And in each frame of animation, it will be responsible to update them and to draw them on the canvas. In order for him to do that, we'll need to define some methods. So the first method will be the update method. And the second method should be the draw method. Now I'll go back to the game.js file and here on the init method, I'm going to create a, a new member for the game object. And I'm going to call this member game world. And this game world will be the new game world object that we created. Now down here, I'm going to create a new object that will be uh, of the type game. So I'm going to call this object pool game and it will be equal a new game object. Let's now deal with the start method of the game object. So here, the first thing I want to do is to call the init function and then I want to call the main loop. And on the main loop, the first thing we want to do is to clear the canvas. And for that, we can use the canvas object with, that we created in the previous video. So just write canvas.clear. After that, we want to update the game world. So we can just use pool game in order to approach the game world and then to call the update function and then we want to draw the game world so we can go to pool game dot game world dot draw and then we'll use the request animation frame method of the window object the same method that we used before to call the same loop so 
let's just write request animation frame and we can call pool game dot main loop now I'll go back to the game world.js file and here on the draw method I'm going to use the canvas object in order to um, draw an image and the image will be the background image so sprites dot background and the position will be uh, x will be 0 and y will be 0 the next step is to open the index.html file and to add references to all of the script files that we wrote so I won't waste your time I will just paste that here and another thing that we'll need to do is to write a small script and in the script um, I'm going to call the load assets function that we wrote and as, an, as a callback I'm going to pass um, pool game dot start so when it finishes loading all the assets it's going to call this function this method on the pool game object that will start the game let's try and open the index.html file on our browser and let's see if we get something well no let's check for errors and yeah this dot init is not a function add game dot start oh okay so this is a common issue in JavaScript what happened here is that we passed a function to another object to activate and in this process the this reference changed so now the this reference is no longer the pool game it is the window object because load assets is a function that sits in the window object um, in order to fix that we need to go to the game.js file and here instead of calling this dot init will call pool game dot init and pool game dot main loop let's go back to our browser and refresh and now you can see that the background image is displayed on screen to make it interesting let's add another object to our game I'll go back to our code and here I will create a new file and I'll call this file stick.js and another function constructor so function stick and the stick object will have for, for now uh, a position so this dot position equals um, x will be 0 and y will be 400 The stick object will also have an update method and a draw method. Let's write them down. So stick dot prototype dot update equals a function and stick dot prototype dot draw equals a function and inside the draw function I want to call the canvas object and to draw an image and the image that I'm going to draw is the um, sprite of the stick that we loaded before so sprites dot stick I want to draw it on the current position of the stick so let's use this dot position inside the update method I just want to write some stab code in purpose of testing so let's just leave a comment here and I will mention that it is just for testing and I'm going to increase in every frame of animation the x value of the position of the stick by one so this dot position dot x plus plus 
Now in our game world, let's add a member and this member will be the stick and it will be a new stick object and inside the update function I'm going to call this dot stick dot update and after I will draw the background image I want to call this dot stick dot draw the final step for now is to open the index.html file and to add a reference to the stick.js file that we wrote. So script src and here I'm going to write stick.js and save it. I will open the index.html file on my browser and now you can really see the main loop in action. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned for more. Goodbye.